Hello friends, I am Dr. Adriana Davila, this time with a basal cell cancer resection plus reconstruction with Hughes flap and Trippier flap. We begin by marking 5 mm from the tumor to do our resection and infiltrating with local anesthesia. We can do this surgery with local anesthesia and light sedation. Here we are marking where we are going to remove the tripier flap, which consists of skin and muscle from the upper eyelid for the reconstruction of the lower eyelid. I like to leave 10 mm of the skin under the eyebrow so that the patient does not have postsurgical lag of thalamus problems. We begin with the incision with the scalpel in the limits that we previously marked and later with Steven scissors, we remove the tumor and its margins. This is a tumor that is extremely attached to the deep plane and bone, so it is a bit complicated to remove it completely at the beginning. Here we remove it and see the defect and do a little hemostasis with cautery, but not much since what we are looking for is a good vascularization of the area. Once we see our defect, we proceed to further clean the area where there is cancer and confirm the clean bed. To begin our reconstruction of the posterior lamella, we place a point on the gray line of the upper eyelid and place a DMAR retractor for upper eyelid aversion. We're going to proceed to start with our Hughes flap with subconjunctival lidocaine and epinephrine. We mark 4 mm from the upper edge of the tarsus, I do it with cautery. With a scalpel, we dissect conjunctiva and tarsus, and with forceps and west cut, I proceed to dissect the conjunctiva and tarsus from the upper part, which is what we're going to place on the lower eyelid. We need to leave at least 6 mm on the upper eyelid margin so that it maintains its shape and has support. It must be remembered that the upper tarsus measures 10 mm. We proceed to suture the flap to the medial edge of the lower eyelid defect and to the periosteum hammock. We use this periosteum hammock when we do not have tissue to anchor them after resection. The orbital rim is dissected and a periosteal flap is taken, which is averted so that it can be anchored to the tarsoconjunctival flap or Hughes flap. We use the periosteum elevator to lift the periosteal flap or periosteal hammock. We proceed to release and suture the tarsus to the periosteum hammock. You have to do this at the bottom and the top of the hammock. We make a tarsal strip on the upper eyelid. 
dividing the lamella and removing the eyelid margin where the meibomian glands are to prevent the formation of epithelial cysts. The upper eyelid is sutured to the periosteum hammock with 5-0 proline. We see how our reconstruction is taking shape and we proceed to make the tripier flap, which consists of taking skin and muscle from the upper eyelid to place it on the lower eyelid. We perform the dissection with Westcott to maintain the vascularization of our flap as best as possible and we place it in the area where we want to have it. We close the upper eyelid with 6-0 proline and we have to give some stitches in the periorbitary periosteum to be able to lift the cheek and that it has support in the periosteum. We give some deep stitches with Breckel 4-0 to support the cheek. Here we're giving the sutures to the periosteum and later to the muscle and in this way we traction and support the cheek. We perform several of these sutures along the defect that we are reconstructing and this reduces our defect. We use a malleable retractor to protect the glove and proceed to close the defect. In post-operative care, you must leave an ointment with antibiotic and anti-inflammatory and patch it for a few days so that it makes contact with the vascular bed. This is a picture after six weeks and the flap had been opened two weeks before. The surgical margins were clean.